uh, we're basically on time and we're ready to get into uh, the discussion session. So uh, what I would like is for all the speakers to uh, turn on their video uh, in this morning session. Uh, Ready? And of course, um, the floor is open for, for other questions from the audience. Yes, Ali. Uh, yes, Daniel. Yes, I have a question for understanding from Marys. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Marys, thank you for your interesting talk. So I want to understand. So with the mm -hmm. AFM, you said that uh, we can right. do a- Marys, so can you turn on, function. sorry to insist, can you turn on your video, please? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yes, Daniel. So, uh, yes, yes, so I, I can repeat the question. So uh, in one of the slides also, you pointed out that with AFM, you can also study the protein leak interaction. Yes. So I want to know what exact information do we obtain? There is binding affinity, the strength of binding, or what exactly do we get from there? You, you will understand the binding affinity because you will be uh, because as I showed, you have the receptor and ligand which will be linked, then you you could play, it's a, they call it pooling with uh, the force of the IFM. And at the same time that you have this pooling happening, you have the energy, um, the, the, the force spectroscope, force spectroscopy, giving you the information of the in binding affinity happening between the both of them. So mm -hmm. this is this is it is a really simple exper experiment to do, but uh, as you know, we are dealing with parasites. So this is why I'm not doing that in Congo for sure, and I never done that, did it because you need to have um, um, proper uh, laboratory in order to avoid contamination. But it's a simple experiment, just pulling, just attach your your ligand to. Uh, your, your IFM tip, then you approach it to the, the surface of infected uh, um, cell, and you see the pooling happening between both of them, which will give you directly information on the binding affinity between both of them. I see. This is interesting. Th thank you. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, not I'm not married. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to say something. Uh, please go ahead, Amadou. Okay. Now, I, I think that uh, the, this session is uh, really uh, wonderful. Uh, oh, wait, can you turn on your video? Huh? Can you turn on your video, please? It is impossible for me to, to, turn, turn, on to turn on the video. Yeah. It's not possible. Ah, it's not possible. Okay, go ahead then. It's impossible to, <laughs> to put video on. Okay, now it's okay. Now, okay, it, it was, okay, now it's okay. I, I just want to, to say that the, this session is, is really a, a, a very, very good session. So the starting of the of a, uh, African Physical Society International Conference is a really a very, very, very good uh, starting. And I hope that we'll uh, continue like that. And we are exactly on time. This is, this is uh, a, extremely uh, important. And, uh, and I want to, to congratulate all, all the speaker for, for the, the clear and, and nice talk and also interesting. You know, uh, all, all, the, all, the, all the talk we, we, we heard this morning are, are of uh, important interest for, for Africa, for African development. So thank you very much. Thank you, Amadou, for your comments. Um, okay, so... Uh, Questions from the audience. I, I mean, I will, I will start. Uh, I have a question for you, uh, Jart, on your the quantum coherence. Um, you know, this is something that is. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not a field that I follow so closely, but uh, I remember there was a lot of debate about whether this quantum coherence was real, uh, or whether one could explain all the phenomena and forces with just classical uh, stuff. What's has the dust settled yet, or has more noise been created, or what's what's going on there? Maybe if I can share my screen, yeah, I sure. have one slide that's maybe of interest, I, um, and I believe that was the first point of starting to settle this debate. Uh, these are some space slides that I saved. Let me see where they are. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so I sh did show this slide. That was the, f the start of the debate. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the papers that has started to settle the dust. Um, okay. So the original experiments have been done again, much more carefully um, and also using um, some simulations in order to differentiate between the different types of coherences. There are basically three types of coherences, pure electronic coherences, um, pure vibrational coherences, which can be either ground states or <clears throat> excited state coherences, and then mixing between electronic and vibrational coherences, which are called vibronic coherences. And most of the coherences are of a vibrational origin and moreover of a ground state vibrational origin, which means they are simply a Raman excitations and nothing to be excited about. Um, but there seems to be some evidence of long living vibronic coherence. And, and there's, there's still some research being done into this, but um, the, the original um, idea that these long living coherences might be relevant for benef benefiting the physiological uh, um, processes. Um, that is not that's not the case anymore. It, it might be a few percent of improvement at most for some of these processes, and that is nothing to be excited so, about. So, but just to understand, um, so you're let's say uh, as as one goes higher in temperature, um, one would expect, of course, that the role of these uh, right. quantum coherences will become irrelevant. Yes. Um, and so have there been uh, systematic uh, temperature dependent studies to, to study this? They have, yeah. okay. Um, actually very early in this point. So the very first um, paper that was published, um, which I showed that was at cryogenic temperatures in St. Calvin. Mm -hmm. But in the following year, um, a study at room temperature was published where similar long living coherences were seen. Actually, um, coherences that lasted even longer, up to one picosecond. And after that, some other systems were investigated at different temperatures, including room temperature, also seeing um, coherences lasting for over a picosecond. I see. I see, I see, I see. Okay, interesting. Okay. Uh... If I can uh, continue the discussion on this, uh, in your uh, initial slide, you also mm -hmm. mentioned DNA repair. Now, I work on the structural biology of some uh, DNA helicases, which have an iron sulfur cluster. And I would like, you know, to know whether I need to, you know, start taking into account quantum processes or if it, this is still one of the areas, you know, photosynthesis seems to be a bit special in this respect. Well, not necessarily. Um, actually, photosynthesis, well, the primary process is you can divide into two parts. The first is energy transfer, so transfer of excitations, and then specifically these excitons, these delocalized excitations. And the second part takes place in the reaction center, where you have coupled charge transfers. So you have proton transfer to the one side of the membrane, electron transfer to the other side of the membrane. And especially the, well, well actually both of these processes, um, as you'll probably be aware, are, are based on, on, on tunneling, quantum tunneling. Uh, and this is a non-trivial quantum effect that takes place, that is very ubiquitous in, in biology. And this is also particularly the proton tunneling that takes place in DNA repair, in the DNA repair mechanism. Um, so that, that is uh, definitely a quantum phenomenon. Whether there are other quantum phenomena involved in DNA synthesis, DNA repair or so, um, I, I don't know this field that well. I know that there's a lot of experimental studies that are going on. Um, yeah, so maybe we should wait a few years and, and there will be some more evidence of quantum, of quantum processes in other biological systems. Thank you. Uh, have a question? Yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, yeah, I'll yes, uh, if you go, if you go to your slides, <laughs> to judge, judge your slides, you, as a wave function, the wave function. Mm -hmm. The wave function, you said that the psi one, two is equal to one over two, 
parentheses, psi one, psi naught, plus to minus psi naught, psi one. Yeah, yeah, the wave function, uh, that is a, uh, yeah, that's, that's a slide. Uh, that wave function, he, 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 can you say, is he, a, is he a singlet state or is he a triplet state? Um, no, it's a singlet state. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, it's the quantum superposition of these two product states. So the energy is split it into two levels due to the okay. strong yeah. interaction. And then you have delocalization. So you have the simultaneous um, what's um, occupation of the, the one state. Okay, so here the one and the two refer to the two dipoles, and one and zero refer to the excited state in a ground state. So you see here that the excited state of molecule one is populated. Here, the excited state of molecule two is populated. And since this is a quantum position, superposition, um, yeah, it just means that the energy is, is um, shared by both of these molecules, or both of these states. Both of these states occur with um, equal probability. Okay, they, 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 are, they, are, they, are, they are bosons, quite the right. Uh, uh, pardon? Are they bosons, bosons? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes, of course. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, questions for other speakers. This is an open session, so. Um, thank you, Abu. Thank you. Hello, Hassan. Can I come in, please? Yeah, please go ahead, uh, Malik. Uh, thank you, Hassan, and thank you, colleagues. I was just to uh, follow up of uh, what Prof. Ahmed Wagi has mentioned. This is an, this first session is a fantastic uh, proof that uh, the ICTP training of uh, a large amount of youngsters in its lab and associated labs has given fruits. And we do really see how quite a number of African fellows have uh, progressed. That's one. And the second point, it is a really uh, 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 fantastic proof of how physics can be applied in the field of biosciences. So really giving a, a fantastic milestone to physics through biophysics. Thank you so much for all the presenters. That was awesome and fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Malik. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Amna, you... Um... Yeah, I just wanted to say that I was trying to be simple and uh, and I just missed that I didn't show the background of the experiment because I expect that no one is going to be interesting about what exactly going on. And I just wanted to show you one thing is that in general, I just want to show one slide. So in general, if you want to do experiments for in vitro or in vivo, you just need to know which uh, microscope you use. It depends on what you are interested to look at it. So for example, the, as I told you in the presentation that I use a total internal refraction fluorescence because I'm just was interesting to see the area which is very close to the surface. But you can use other fluorescence which you will not get uh, the good signal. So for the students, the thing is that you want to know what you want to do, what's exactly the, the sample you want to study and you need to optimize the system. And most of important is to choose the technique or the microscope which is uh, available, I mean, you have about more than 100 different type of microscope. It depends on what you're interested to see, which parameter you want to study. You want to study the system as you just want to see the structure, you want to see the interaction as a real time, or you want to freeze the interaction and see what's going on. So I just wanted to show that because I just wanted to be on time and I missed to, to tell this details. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hi, Ali. Ah, yes. Uh, yeah, I I still want to ask a question to. Please go ahead, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you can you uh, show your face, please? Sure. Um, Thank you. There you are. Thanks. Great. Go ahead. Okay, so I still want to ask a question to Chad and. He's, he talk, I guess his talk is mainly about the experiment done in quantum biology. Does he have any idea about what type of simulation are done, what type of dynamics codes method they use for the dynamics, uh, dynamical simulation? Okay, yeah, thank you Steve for the question, a very good question. So you rightly said that I am approaching this field mainly from, from an experimental point of view. So I, I 
don't know everything that's going on in the theory. So yeah. since the first publication, a lot of quantum theorists uh, have applied their models and methods to try to, to understand what's going on. So there, there's really a lot of methods that have been used in this field. Um, yeah, I think the best way to get a good idea about which methods are relevant, which not, or, or maybe to, to, to read some of the review papers in this field. Uh, I can also send you some papers um, if, if you maybe just send me an email. I, I okay. can send you some pointers. And I think that would be a good place to start because there's, there's really a lot of theory that has been done. The, the theoretical side has developed um, uh, yeah, really a lot faster than the experimental side. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Steve, for your question. Um, any students uh, who want to ask questions? We have a lot of young students in the audience. Um, don't be shy. So let, let me just add that, you know, one of the, the goals of this uh, virtual meeting is to uh, facilitate uh, getting to know each other better, knowing what we do scientifically, building collaborations and stuff. So. I encourage the young people to take this opportunity as much as they can. Okay. Uh, I just want to say just one thing is that please. maybe if someone of the speaker, including me, if someone finds that there is some information that can be shared with the students, maybe we can send to you Ali and then you can send it to all the participants. Yes, sure. Sure, Especially sure. papers, if someone interesting about it or some information. Mm -hmm. Definitely, that's a that's a great suggestion. Um, okay, so uh, I think this has been a, a wonderful session this morning. Uh, let me let me add that the um, uh, the topics of this this meeting are are very very broad. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, and this is really intentional. We started off with uh, biophysics in the morning. Um, and we ended off with a bit of nice quantum discussion, which is a, a great motivation for the afternoon session, which is going to be on quantum information, uh, quantum computing. So very different things. Tomorrow, we're going to hear about uh, more condensed matter uh, oriented things, electronic structure. In the afternoon, we'll get into the high energy world. Um, and also uh, before that, actually climate science. Uh, so. Um, yes, we have a very broad selection of topics. Uh, I hope that you all hang on uh, through, through all of it. Um, we have a poster session on Friday morning. Uh, so the details of how that's going to work have been already sent to all the poster participants. Um, and uh, this afternoon, starting at 2 p.m. Uh, Central European time, uh, we're having a joint session with the African Light Source meeting. Uh, so you've all received an email uh, during, uh, in the last hour on how to attend that uh, Zoom meeting. And then after that, uh, we will reconvene again uh, in this meeting to continue with the quantum information session. So uh, if there are no more comments and things that people want to say, uh, I guess that's it for this morning. Uh, thank you again. I will see you later this afternoon.